Okay, hello, my beautiful creative friends. How are you today? I am going to be creating an art journal page today using basically mainly magazines and some mixed media products. I am working on an um, on a journal. It's an eight by eight journal. It's listed in the description. It's by Speedball. It's a watercolor. It's like a thick 140 pounds, 300 GSM. So it's really great. Oh, hey, Nikki. Um, so it's a, so it's great that it's a really thick, they're really thick pages. So I really love working with it. And I am going to flip the page because I don't have two of these. So I can only, um, uh, kind of work on the same one, but I just kind of flip the page and go on to another page because of that. Now, there are so many options for like magazines and I'm going to tell you more or less what I did I mean you can see I ripped a lot of things out of the magazines but before I show you that I'm kind of going to show you what kind of magazines I kind of used this one which is a free magazine we get at our local grocery store I just picked it up the other day and what my point of it is is to really show you like what kind of things you can do look at the amount of texture you can get especially with cooking magazines things like just amazing textures and colors right so for example look at this beautiful color that you could get now I've ripped some of the colors around so you can see like for example this one came from this exact page and this is a beautiful vibrant color that you could use in your art journals look at the rest of the texture there is words that you can use and there's just so many different things you know even to just use it for script stuff okay then there is um then there is like for example things like chatelaine and uh just so nice oh hi elaine hi terry um so so there is just so much you can do. So for example, like things, you know, I've ripped up words. There is some really, really neat things here as well. Like I'll show you in a second. So if let's look, there's even double pages. So I just open this now. Well, and then there is like, you know, like look at the texture that you can get. You can count things like little, little pieces, little uh, designs. Even some of the magazines, for example, they'll give you like already, like for example, something like Style and Home. You can already get like a very nice like palette that you could use for your artwork. So there's just so many uh, options and things that you can do. And like, you know, if you, let's say you're looking for a color palette, look how beautiful this is, you know, like just this orange, just even using this part would be gorgeous. So there's just so many things you can do and it just comes out so nice. Um, I like, oops, there's another one that goes, one of my magazines fell. Like there's just so many options. There is even here in this, in this, or look at this, like how cool would that look or something for Christmas you can do if you want to do like, even to use it for cards, you know, but I saw, oh, you like, look at these flowers. Okay. I just fell in love with these flowers and I thought, oh, I could use this for something. But, um, but right now I'm not going to do that because I'm doing something else. There are, the possibilities are literally endless, but I love, and I'm going to show you here, the color palette. This is one of my favorite color palettes, like the patina color palette. And believe it or not, I use no paints here. There is no paints. I use. I did use something else. Oh my gosh, Terry! Thank you so much. That is so kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for your support. Um, so there is like so much you can do. So today I'm going to pick the same color palette because I want to show you exactly how I did it. So I already picked some colors from here, as you can see, and I really like this color. This is a nice one too. And, but it doesn't have to be like exact, like look at this beautiful blue. That would be stunning, right? Like um, that will be like something that you can really use. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna use it today because it doesn't fit my color palette right now, but even this fits my color palette, even though there's a design on it. Uh, so, um, oh, Deborah, yeah, there is a little dollar sign underneath the chat. And if you press that, you can actually like, uh, support any, any person in there. And so any person that is on YouTube that is monetized basically. <laughs> so it's very cool. Um, 
so just want to just get okay look at this for example look at this bedroom i just fell in love obviously i love butterflies so how cool would it be to incorporate this in an art journal i don't know i love it but not today but even like for example i'm going with this color and look at this texture it's very very cool and even the edges here or even the writing and i wanted to show you okay so this color is also part of my palette and how cool is that like that texture from the like it's like you don't even need to make texture this is already in the magazine same with this and i thought this was brilliant okay like the cauliflower i love this cauliflower by the way oh here are the roses that i was talking about look how cool this you could really use i just wanted to show you like literally there's possibilities are endless and and um Endless, that's what I was trying to say. But for this um, for this one, I'm going to use these colors. Oh, and I even want to show you this one. I thought this was really cool. Imagine having this woman like cut out in one of your like art journals. How cool is that? Anyways, so uh, this color is too dark. I'm gonna pass on it and we're gonna get in with these colors, okay? So what I'm gonna do is there's two things. You could glue, obviously, with gel medium, which is something that I love doing, right? And one of my favorite mediums is this gel medium. And I will definitely use it to seal. But to save up, because that gel medium is really expensive, and you can easily, like, use something like a glue stick to really, uh, you know, like, glue things onto your background. So because I love this color... This is the one I'm going to use and I'm going to rip. So I'm going to kind of start first laying things down because I don't really know where I want them. Uh, but they are just like, you know, they're going to be part of the design. So I don't want all the, the same color everywhere. You want to kind of um, mix the colors around. So this can go maybe this direction. And the nice thing is like, look at... Okay, I don't want the cookies to be in it because that is too dark. But this blue would be really nice. So we could like easily include this here. Now, there's wards on this and that's okay. They can be covered afterwards with gesso. So not to worry about that, okay? And let's do it like this. Okay, now the next color will that will give us a bit of like you know the opposite color which is like these two colors the rust and the patina you know the teal which is my favorite color they go really really well together so I'm just kind of picking how many um let's see how many I can like put around I haven't like might not even be in this order but I just want to kind of have them just place to see where they could go and I also like this kind of color. And this one already has like the writing on it. So it's even cooler. So, yeah. And I do want these squarish, like, um, I like these squarish, like, kind of this, um, shapes, if that makes sense. It really helps with, you'll see, with the composition afterwards. And I really like that. Okay. It might be a little bit different. I don't think I had this color in the other one, but that's okay. And let's see. I want a little bit more of this. This pattern is so nice. I was dreaming about putting it in. I don't think I used it in the other one, but that's okay. Oh, Deborah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I love coming here and doing all these things for you guys. So it just makes me happy to do it no matter what. Okay, let me just see. This texture is brilliant. And I want to put it kind of crossing over here and this one over here. It's not, it might not be exact. And I even want a little bit of like just writing. So for example, if you want to include, I mean, you can use book pages like I've done in the past, right? But um, but I like the writing as well, like the, the text. It's great because it's literally, I mean, some of them are free. Some of them, I mean, if you read magazines, I asked my, so my husband has a, a chiropractic clinic and he gets magazines for the clinic. And I said, oh, can you bring me some, a few magazines? Um, I didn't like, so for example, he brought me like People and Us. And I thought uh, those were not as great. I thought, um, 
the lifestyle, the kitchen ones are better. And as you can see, you see what I meant? Look, look, this one actually came with the paint palette, very similar to what I'm using. Instead of gray, they're using like, I mean, instead of like the blue, they're using gray, but very, very similar. Okay, so I think I'm kind of settled of where I want things. And now I'm going to start gluing. So super easy, you know, kindergarten collage. That's what I call it, kindergarten collage, right? Um, let's start gluing one on top of another. And this one I want here. Now you can definitely use a gel medium. And just if you want to save up on your gel medium, then, you know, it's better better um, to use something like this, okay? Okay. So it's just a very um, easy way to, to create a collaged background okay now I am going to leave a little bit of space in between them because I do want them some of them might overlap and some of them will leave space so that creates that really nice 3d texture and yeah garden magazines would be amazing that would be like really great for you to use so if you want to yeah get your like if you have old magazines you know which ones are great national geographics there's a lot of texture there too the other day my dad I was at my dad's house and and I was, um, he had a National Geographic, but I know he really cherishes them. So I couldn't, I felt bad taking them, but I thought it was like, oh, that's so good. It would look so good. It actually had uh, a really nice um, crossword puzzle. And I thought, oh, these crossword puzzles would look so good in my, in my background, right? So, but I didn't take it. <laughs> okay, this is like the mouse of a hum hamster. That's funny, but I think I'm going to use the other side. It looks really creepy. Oh, no, I guess I'm not using it on the other side. Well, whatever, you know what, it matches. Is that weird that it's the mouse of a hamster? It was a little hamster on there. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm using it. So, um, so like a lot of different magazines would work. I don't recommend, as I said, the people's ones. I mean, unless there's some, they're very busy. I find them really, really busy, and then you can't see. Um, could you photocopy it? Sorry, I wasn't reading. Um, I wasn't reading the question. It says, could you photocopy, but I wasn't sure what you're referring to. Yeah, I find that, um, you're right, that like magazines is are like much lighter than scrapbooking paper. So they're much easier to collage. So, Oh, and my dad's magazine. Yeah, maybe I could have, but that that took like too. That would take too much effort. I mean, there is lots of crosswords I could probably print from somewhere else, right? But it's fine. I I found some really good things to work here. Okay, this is the, that that mouth is creeping me up. I can't. I have to cover it. <laughs> this is this is funny, but it's creeping me out. I can't. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, that's better. Uh, let me see what else. Oh, I really like this design. I said I would like it, and do I want to use it? It's like a board game of some kind. Let's see. This looks cool. It's too big, maybe. Um, yeah, the shiny finishes are good, but I'm going to be putting... Um, I'm going to be putting a gesso, clear gesso on top. So probably will not, most of it will not stay, but it's still really nice. Okay. So I think I'm good on this side. I don't want to overdo it. Maybe just to move this one here a little bit more. So they also give like a really great paper texture, which is nice as well. Okay. So there we go. So that's kind of this side. And now I'm going to put it on the other side. I think part of the allure of the magazines is that it's kind of like junk, it's free and it just, um, that's, that's great. Like that's for me, like anything that is free. I mean, obviously magazines are not free except for the one I picked up at the grocery store. I don't know if in the US grocery stores give you free magazines, cooking magazines, here some of them do. 
but um, having like, uh, and I'm in Canada for those of you who might not know. So yeah, so like if you, um, if you're like, you're like if you can pick up some free ones, there's some like health food stores that give you free ones as well. And um, even like some like, in our place, like things where like community centers and things you get, like the town gives you free ones. I mean, you can collect those, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to like pay for magazines. Uh, if, or like maybe your doctor's office would be willing to part from some of them. So that would be ideal as well. Um, I just want to thank again, those who have given the super chat. Um, I actually just got a new feature the, under my regular videos, not only like the ones where, um, where I'm doing the lives, you can actually, uh, uh, like, also I have this thanks thing. <laughs> so I'm always grateful when somebody just like, you know, thanks me for that. I really appreciate it. Okay. So, um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much. So I don't want to leave, I don't want to cover everything. I want to leave some white space. So as you can see, I left already some here and I am going to kind of connect the two, but they're not going to be, like, I'm not going to be covering everything. Now, uh, you can definitely um, uh, how do you call this, like, cover everything if you really want to. I just don't want to do that. Um, so, and even if I put a little bit on top, I'm going to be covering that with gesso, so it will be fine. Oh, there's the other part of the of the hamster. <laughs> that was a big hamster. Uh, oh, thank you so much for saying that. I'm so that that is that is that really is something that me, that's this is what I do every day for this for you guys and for helping all of you. It really makes a difference for me. Thank you, Deborah, for saying that. And I, I mean, I have helped myself. So if I can help myself, then why not help others? Right. So thank you for saying that. Um, okay. I think there's something missing here. Now, even if you see here that it's, um, that if there's stain, I'm going to be covering that with gesso. So you're not to worry about that. You're not going to be seeing that. And I really want this. Thank you, Nikki. I know we've talked a lot, so. Like I've made so many great friends from this, from this amazing, I wanna call it hobby, but it's not a hobby anymore. It's my job, but I made so many great friends um, just because um, of this really. So, oh, Diane, wow. Hi. Diane is all the way from UK. Yeah, you must be tired. So nice to see you here. So glad you made it. Okay, I think I am good. I don't feel like I have as much of this color. Maybe I should, no, maybe I'm not good yet. And maybe I will, um, I need to add a little bit more of this because I, this is, so this color, which is like, I don't know, you want to call it aqua, patina, whatever you want to call it. It's my favorite color. If even if you ask my kids, what's my favorite color? They're always going to say this teal, aqua, like anything in this, in this realm. So yeah, that's what I love. Okay. I guess yes. Now I like this. Okay. So perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to seal it. And for this, you do want to use some kind of gel medium. I prefer using matte, but you don't have to. Okay. And I am, um, so let me close this. And I have my paintbrush here, actually, believe it or not. I know it's rare for me, but I actually washed my paintbrushes today. They've been sitting in water for too long. I do keep my uh, paintbrush, the one for the gel medium that I use all the time. I keep it in water at all times. I've said this already before, but the reason why I do is because it's, I mean, gel medium is still glue and it it will harden your pens, uh, your paintbrushes. So I always keep it in the water. It's the only paintbrush and it's a dollar store paintbrush. So I don't mind if it gets ruined, but the reason why I do it is because 
I ruined too many patient, too many paintbrushes. You know, putting them, washing them, wash, trying to wash the glue, it just doesn't come out. Oh, Oriana, gracias. Thank you so much. Oh my God, you guys are like amazing. Honestly, like amazing. Thank you. I can't live with this without this community. It's really something special about all of you. I mean, all of us are like, you know, we all build each other up. We all have our different roles in this community. And that's what's beautiful about it. Um, so, sorry, going back to the paintbrush. So, yes, I, I use this paintbrush all the time and for the same thing. And honestly, it's been in the in the in my water for a long time and it's still going strong but it's so much easier to like add the gel medium with a paintbrush than than doing it with uh, sealing it i mean or gluing it then with like something else like a palette knife or something like that okay so now i have this all sealed all good to go putting my paintbrush back and i'm going to dry and that's my creaking chair so this is really important. I always mention this, that it's really important to dry everything really well, okay? Because you want to, um, you know, you want to be able to put layer after layer, but if a layer is wet underneath, then what happens is that you end up with, like you can get up with like mushy stuff and ruined stuff and peeling things. And then you get disappointed like I do sometimes when I get impatient and don't dry everything. And I don't want anybody to be disappointed. So it's really important to just dry everything really, really well. Um, so it just has to be kind of dry to the touch, okay? It's not like um, everything is going to dry perfectly, but at least it's dry to the touch. Gel medium, usually, depending on how thick you lay it, it takes about 24 hours to fully, fully, fully dry. But in the meantime, because this one is so thin, it will, it will, it dries much quicker, okay? Now, I am going to now add a layer of clear gesso. And I could easily just do a white wash of the white gesso. But the reason why I want the clear gesso is because what I want to do is I want to just add the gesso all across and, and then come in with the white gesso to kind of create my composition. Now, you can do this with clear white gesso by really watering it down. That works as well, okay? And I'm, sometimes I even use the same paintbrush I used already before to, to just put this on. So this just helps kind of not only protect it, but it will give the background some grit. Maybe put too much on, not sure. Let's see. Okay, and there is, there we go. Now gesso is not a glue, but it can definitely hold things down if needed, okay? So if you have some areas where your gel medium did not cover, you can definitely just, you know, just you put the gesso and it will protect it as well. So I think I put too much. Let me just remove some of this and maybe with a little baby wipe because I don't want it. It will take too long to, it will take too long to dry. So I just need to kind of wipe it a little bit off. Okay. I don't want this to be uh, taking like hours to dry. That will, that will not be fun for you guys to wait. <laughs> or for me because I'm very impatient, okay? So let me dry the clear gesso. Okay. All right. So, so what I want to do is like I'm going to, the, the gesso is not fully dry, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be working with gesso yet again. And this time I'm actually going to be working with the white gesso. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, hold on, make sure that this paintbrush is completely clean. I can tell you how many times I've actually gone in and <laughs> the paintbrush was dirty okay so first I'm going just to kind of cover these areas where where I had stuff left over from other pages it's a great way just so fixes things 
So here we go. Okay, so now that I have covered this, now uh, it's really hard to like kind of try to explain my train of thought, but I'm gonna try my best, okay? So what I'm going to do is I want to kind of cover any harsher lines that are on the on the um, on the background and kind of blend all these these different designs together. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the gesso at the edges of the design, but also kind of in the corners because I I am trying to kind of create a cohesive collage if that makes sense okay <laughs> it's it's not always easy to explain what i'm trying to do and in a class it's and why am i doing it right like that's the the main thing it's like it's like why am i doing it is way different than how am i doing it here i can cover this this thing that said food because i don't want to say food anywhere for example, I find this corner too harsh, so I can just cover it up, okay? And what gesso does is kind of blends things together. So notice that in the other one, um, in, I did not need to use, I don't need to use any, um, any paint because like the magazines already kind of gave me that, um, those really beautiful colors. Besides that, you can also kind of grab something like, um, hold on, I'm gonna this, uh, a little like sponge brush. And if you really want to create like, like an uneven kind of look onto the background, then you can do that with a sponge brush, okay? Because what it does is that it creates this really kind of uneven effect. Like it, it blends things. You can always grab a baby wipe if you went too much. So for example, I feel like here it's too much and I just only wanted to cover this little space. Um, sorry, I didn't miss, oh, sorry. I didn't, I missed a question. Sorry about that. I just realized I missed a question. Um, somebody asked, uh, Okay, so yeah. So, oh, somebody asked about where this, this gesso. So this gesso is not the clear one, you're right. First, I added just a full coat of clear gesso on top of my, um, of my whole design. Or if you don't have clear gesso, if you don't own clear gesso, then just take this white gesso and kind of water it down a lot. And you will get like the same kind of idea because you don't want to cover your full design. Okay. You don't want to cover everything. So yes, perfect. Thank you. So glad to hear that it was answered. And thank you. Susan is my moderator today. She's a friend, a local friend that helps me a lot. So any questions uh, or if she, she will text me if there is something going on that I don't see. Okay. So she will locally text me. So that's Sometimes I, I don't see the questions when I'm concentrating. So that's that's what happens. Okay. So, so as you can see, this side is kind of starts blending in. Okay. And it's just looking so good. And that's part of the idea is to kind of create um, this design where things are like kind of kind of merging into the background. That's the right word I wanted to say. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm doing is, yeah, it's exactly the right words I found to say that um, what the collage, you whenever you're collaging something, the key to collage is to merge things into the background. That's basically the, the key to that, okay? So, oh, we made it to 106. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, <laughs> for coming to watch. So, um, so what so what the key is, is to like kind of create as if the collage was part of the page and it's only coming out now. Okay. Does that make sense? I think that makes that makes sense to me, like how I want to explain it in terms of like how it makes it easy for me to just bring it is to the back. And 
yeah. So I'm just kind of connecting the, the colors together, if that makes sense. But there's still more layers to come, so don't fret. Okay. Oh, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Okay, so let's uh, dry, okay? Because once I dry, you really get to see, did I cover things enough? Did I not? Do I need a second layer? And so forth, okay? So drying this might still be like, you might still need to um, add another layer to everything, but you don't know until you dry. Yeah, so thank you, Susan. Yeah, so I do really try to like have everything look cohesive. It's really important for me because I want to kind of kind of create it as if, it, imagine if this was a scrapbooking page or a, or, or a card page, a card paper. Like, you know, let's say everything came together like this. Imagine, that would be a really, really cool design. But not everything comes this way, right? So we tend to take our own... Um, designs with the magazines or even with collage papers or whichever whatever you use and we use them to kind of create our own backgrounds that is the beauty of mixed media and that's why i like it so much and i love how quick the gesso dries except for in this corner which i'm going to try okay so once i'm dry i'm going to show you i'm going to i feel like some parts still need to be covered a little bit more and that's why I dry first, like I said before, because I want to make sure that I covered enough where I wanted to cover. So for example, I'm gonna give this one another pass just because I really want this to, to work well. And, and I really like this, the stripes so that you can create with the brush, like the strokes. So sometimes I just do that. I want to cover this darker blue that I don't feel fits in here for this one. So maybe I will take some of that away. Okay. Okay, let's see. Did I cover everything I wanted to cover? Okay. Because you don't want everything, you, you don't want anything to stand out too much because if something stands out too much, then what happens is that then like your eye is going to focus on that direction and you want your eye to focus on your focal point, which you're going to see what I use for focal points soon enough. But if something is too dark, for example, if this color is too dark, okay, then what would happen is that my eye will like directly go into that and will not go into anything else. And then it will like, I will always be looking at that instead of looking at something else. So yeah. Okay, so there we go. All right, I'm gonna just quickly dry everything else. Okay, there we go. All right, um, okay. So now this is my favorite part. And I said I didn't use colors, but I didn't say I didn't use crayons. So I grabbed a couple things. I had to grab colors that were very similar, uh, very similar. Gosh, I'm like speaking Spanish and Spanglish here. Very similar to <laughs> to to like the um, to to the colors that I'm using. So this is a scribble stick from uh, Dina Wakely. You could you probably use gelatos. You could use like marabou crayons. I just actually ordered the neo colors, and it has a beautiful color of this, but I haven't used it. Now I'm also going to, of course, my favorite. My favorite is going to. I'm going to be using the my uh, Stabilo all. But this is a great find, and I found it in my local um, art store, but I have linked it to Blix and to other places where this has it. I think Amazon even as well. These are called pastel pencils. They're more for, like, drawing, but for mixed media, they're amazing. The brand is Conte à Paris, where something they're made in France, and they're great. Love them, okay? So I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this. Oh, something sticky here. So... 
I tend to touch my my pages a lot to make sure they're not sticky because I don't want to um, I don't want to have to like have my pencils all caked in gesso. Okay, so definitely you want to make sure that everything is dry. So I literally touch everything, and now it is okay. Good. So let's start with, I'm going to start with this one, okay? So what I want to do is I'm kind of going to complement complement the, the designs. Now, you want to make sure that you're using, um, oh, Michal, hi. Um, you want to make sure that you're using water-soluble mediums, okay? So, I mean, obviously you can use watercolors, but the fun part of this is that I wanted to use like pencils because I didn't want to use any paints or anything like that. And um, what's nice about this is that they're water, obviously they're water soluble and you can kind of really pinpoint to where you want them. So you don't have to like, you know, it, they're not going to go everywhere the way, like I know I've worked with the magicals before where they go basically everywhere. So, or even like watercolors, right? Like I end up, they end up like everywhere. So in this case, you can just use a little bit of color and just add a tiny little bit, okay? Just a tiny little bit and just blend it in. Um, you can also, so now I want to show you this one. It's really, really, really nice, this pencil. I just want to see. So what I want to do is kind of, I want to kind of outline you can hear it's really chalky, okay? Okay. And it even blends really nicely. Not as much as the crayons. And you, if you want to not get as, as involved with this, you can't. You, I mean, if you want to just have like a more blended look, then obviously use more like a water soluble crayon. But what I like about this is that it actually keeps like a little bit of the line and I love that. So I am going, I'm just basically like kind of surrounding things. Okay. And yeah, localizing the color. That's, I like the, the, the way you say it. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. Localizing the color. That's the right way of saying it. And if you don't want to, since it has gesso on top, that's what I wanted to say before. Since this has gesso on top, underneath, I mean, on top or everywhere, even if you make a mistake, you can definitely uh, fix it. Now, I do love my um, Stabilo All because, again, it writes on everything. And what it's nice is that it, it also blends with water. So I am going to... And you can go as slow or as fast as you want. I mean, I'm like, I'm kind of highlighting quickly here because I want kind of to do it almost intuitively. I don't want anything to take over. Like, I don't want to think too much because when you think too much, it ends up being like, um, <laughs> you end up uh, not doing things. You know, you kind of change your mind a lot. And I'm letting it kind of blend. I don't always like... Um, Yeah, I'm not always like like fix it. I just like yeah, that's nice. And I haven't even done the other side yet, but I just want to add um yeah, I don't know actually no. So so this is the problem that I sometimes it's really hard to explain why I do something. So I want to explain it to you, okay? But I don't actually know why I chose a certain reason, a certain, a, why I chose to put the black here or the or the stabilo here or the or the red there. You know, it's like it's kind of like, okay, why did I do that? How do I explain it to to people if I'm trying to like, you know, just explain things, and I just don't know how to do that. So I'm gonna try my best. Uh, to explain, but what it is, I'm kind of filling the composition with a few squares. Does that make sense? Okay. So, 
Yeah, I do see it in my mind's eye, but I think it's just kind of like I'm just letting things flow. I'm not thinking too much. I think if I think too much, I will, I will not do it, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, yeah, maybe it is that. But um, that's why I like so much um, the neurographic art that, that I did, because it really helped, like, you know, not having to think, just letting things flow. So, um, yeah, that helped me a lot. But okay, I think I'm adding more than last than in the, in the last one, and that's okay because, like, um, it's like you know, it just you just don't know. Like, every even though I'm doing this exact same process that I did in my other journal that you know, the, that I showed at the beginning where, where I, um, I, I, um, I did it like, you know, I've, yes, I think I created it through the couple of days ago, even though that's the case, I still, um, feel like it's always gonna, things are gonna, always gonna come out differently than what we think. Okay. Things are never going, you can never repeat the same artwork. You can try your best, but you can never repeat the same one. Now, Stabilo pencil, I talk about, I've talked, I've spoken about this a lot. Stabilo all pencils, they come in white as well and in other colors. But what I find is helpful, the Stabilo is helpful because it writes on everything, wood, metal. So I've really used it for many different things. But What's hard to do is to use um, to use it on like texture layers because like um, layers in mixed media are usually very like 3D and it's hard because you end up um, you end up with like a lot of like you know kind of rough areas and the Stabilo All is the one that actually goes on everything which is great. So okay, I just want to blend the. And you don't have to use your finger like me. I just, I know I use my finger a lot, but. Um, and I keep on removing, like if I see that it's too much and I just don't want so much of it, I'll remove some of it. Uh, it's looking really good. I like the way it's looking. I think I added more red in this one compared to the other one. So. But it still looks really nice. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now, the nice thing about magazines, then I'd like, you know, besides like using it to collage, like it's really nice to just think of other ideas that we could use them for. So, for example, we could like probably find a focal point for it. So, a focal point for my artwork. So, as you saw, those flowers that I that I really loved. I'm not going to use them today, but it is definitely something I want to use for a different day. But um, I cut out this really cool plant. It's actually from an advertisement you're going to see. And besides the plant, I also, I'll show you what else I cut for this. So is this from this advertisement? It's about breathing easy. It's a machine, I guess, for breathing. I'm assuming it's like more for... Um, and I just thought I would add it here, but first let me dry. Okay, so <laughs> that's nice. You can nobody. We're not going to tell anybody that you're at work watching, watching live, Elaine. Okay. Oh, okay. I need a new wipe. That's too dirty. Okay. So I'm going to just dry this a little bit so I can glue the background so I can glue the focal point I meant to say okay so I want to glue it right here or maybe not let's see where it goes looks sometimes I mean in the other page I glued it on the other side but let's see I'm gonna look to see how which side it looks better because I have other things that I'm going to be using as well. So let's see, does it look better here or, or does it look better maybe here, maybe even like sticking out a little bit. Let's see. 
Um, yeah, I like it there. Okay, so I am definitely going to glue this. Okay. And, and this, I'm going to do it over my hands. Just don't want to, because you want to seal it. I mean, I could have done this, obviously, right before. I don't want to rip it. So I was lucky that I could find two of these plants. Somehow this advertisement was in two different magazines. So they, I used this one as well for the other one. And I'm going to show you what I did with it. So, okay, let me just do this here. And I just want to seal it. Okay. So, oh, there we go. And actually, you know what? While I'm here, I want to show you what else you can do with the magazines is obviously cut out words and letters. And I thought I wanted to include things like that in it here. For example, I found the word art. What do you know? So I figured... It's something that I thought would inspiration. It would be very inspirational for me. So not only, uh, yeah, you can definitely cut everything at the same time. I did this obviously for the show, uh, for the for the class. But you don't have to. I mean, you could just enjoy. It. You could just sit in front of the TV and just do something like that, right? Like just just kind of cut things that you like, words that you like, <laughs> look at it, so get your mojo back. That's fun and funny, but it wasn't related to anything. I really, I'm just looking to see, I even cut out the word perfect. Oh, I like the word home. Like, see, like I, I didn't even actually cut everything in advance, funny enough. I, I wanted to wor use the word home and together. I thought that would be really nice. So for example, you know, like I just, it's just great to just have, Home and, home and Garden Magazine, and you can just cut the word home, the word life, okay? So I, I've, you've seen in other, um, you've seen this in other journals that I've done where I, I, I like including words in it. And obviously you don't have to use the magazines for this. You can use anything, but um, I just love including words in my art. I feel words are really meaningful and it makes a difference to include them in here so especially it's like kind of like a tree of life growing right so this is great let's see let's put home over maybe home over here and it's really long but that's okay because i can i can cover it with gesso now health is obviously really important to me so health is something that i always like having you know for good health and family so look at how many words you can find out of in your actual in any in magazines you know so if you're using home magazines you know, or things that have, you know, food. I don't know. It's, it's good. <laughs> you find things. So, okay. Oh, no, Elaine, I didn't know you were not going to work there anymore. Okay, so I want the word discover here, but I really wanted the word to the 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 word together somewhere. Better together is really nice. Maybe better together. I'll leave it. I'll leave them together because it is better together. <laughs> Friendships, love, even like you know our art community. It's just we're all better together. Okay, so yeah, let me just seal this and then I'm going to dry. So I, last time, I, like in the other one, I basically put the words at the end, but I really want to, uh, this will just cut on time. So then I don't have to dry twice and then I can just dry everything together. Oh, sorry. So... <clears throat> 
So just drying everything well. And then I'm going to show you more stuff that I'm doing here. Okay. So for example, I don't like this brown thing, obviously, and you have to kind of cover that up. So what I do it is I take my gesso again. So this is why I love gesso. It's kind of like my best friend uh, besides you guys. <laughs> and I'm just kind of covering it up, okay? So covering the gesso, maybe with my finger. If Sometimes I just literally use my finger because I find it so much more helpful. So that now it looks like it's part of the design, right? And I'm just gonna go back to kind of fix anything that I found like I don't like, or it's too dark, or like, you know, doesn't fit. And that's something you can go back and do. So the gesso will always kind of blend into everything. This, for example, here, I feel like I need to cover this up. Yeah. Oh, it looks so much better. And this one right here, I think, as well. So just I'm just going to kind of blend that in a little bit. So that's a good way to do it, just to kind of blend, blend up, blend down. Okay. Okay, that's much better. So it's kind of all blended in. Oh, and I need some blend here. Kind of. Okay, I think that's better. Because I don't want it to have like, I want it to have sharp edges, but not so sharp that like, it looks, um, it looks like, like squares. So I like the squares here. I like the squares here, but in some area, I'm kind of blending. And if you create anything, please, inspired by this, I would love to see it. Please share it in my Facebook group for any of you who who are, are not part of it. So, yeah, please, please, and thank you. Okay, so I really like this. I'm going to dry again. So as you can see, I keep on working up and down, layers, layers and more layers. And this is important. It's really important to, like, you know, go back and forth with them because um, it really helps with like the texture, the color, the composition. Okay. So everything that you do adds a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more and so forth. Okay. So hold on. I'm not done yet. I want to show you because like these, again, I, you have to kind of blend these words now. They kind of look like they're sticking out. So in order to blend them, I'm gonna grab, go back with my Stabilo pencil and I'm gonna just, what I usually do, because it will fit the theme, I usually just kind of outline them, okay? I do this even with my, with like regular words that I use from like, you know, Tim Holtz and that. And this is where I fix this part with the home. Um, so I haven't dried everything here, but I see that the words are dry. So that's why um, I'm kind of using, I'm kind of going on that. Um, so hold on. Okay, so now I'm kind of, hold on. So I really like how this is looking. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you don't want the lines to actually, I prefer if they're not perfect. Don't know why I made them so lined up perfectly. <laughs> and you can also like also do something else and that is create like little markings. So I'm gonna use actually this other pen. I'm just don't wanna lean on. So you can, oh no, this one doesn't work as well. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I'll go this. So you can do like things like little markings on, it adds, it adds a lot of character to it, okay? So you can also add journaling. So you can take a marker or a pencil or something, add some journaling. Um, actually a pencil journal would look good. I did it with a marker, with like a pen and those like thin pens don't work so well on mixed media, so. 
So what you want to do is why I'm adding these is because what it does, it's kind of creates like a little bit of like flow and movement in certain areas. So I find it really helpful. And I'm even crossing through the lines. So as you can see, I end up like with these really cool designs. And um, oh, I forgot something really important that I did is that I created these roots. So I just loosely, loosely drew these roots. I felt like I always, I always connect obviously to trees and I've said this before and I connect to trees a lot and drawing the roots really helped. And I, then I, what I did is I sp spread them and let them like kind of create, look at that, how cool is that? So, oh, hi, Cindy. So, and I'm also adding a little bit of the shadow, not too much here on the tree. I just wanted to add a little bit of shadow on the tree as well. So it really, oh, that way too much, too much, too much, too much. Hold on. Okay, there we go. You can always um, remove what you don't like. And want to show you another little cool little trick, but in a second, first I just want to, um, yeah, grounding the creation. I like that. You have a knack for words, Deborah. It's good. I like, I think it's like, I, I, I love words, but I always like, especially now when I'm concentrating on creating, I have to like, um, I end up not thinking of what I want to say. Okay. And I think like even like, you know, as I said, you can grab a pencil and um, sorry, one second. I want to add a pencil and add something, but I am keep on leaning my hands on this and it's happening. So while I dry, I'm going to journal at the same time. So you can just add little journaling or words or something like that. Um, I want like a, maybe a word here, like grateful. How cool is that? So you can really like, you know, you really are building on top of things. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, so everybody's back together. Um, better together. It's always better, right? Oh, this is so hot. Um, always better. So, yeah, I really like this a lot. Okay, wait, one more little trick, and then I, we can, like, call it a day. I really, as I said, I love the Stabilo pencil. And one of the reasons why I love it is because you can do so much things with it, so many things with it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create my own little concoction of uh, paint, kind of paint, okay? And then using a paintbrush, which I have to find over here, hold on. Using a paintbrush, I'm going to add some splatters because you can't have anything with you can't have a layout without splatters. So as I said, I said I wouldn't use any paints today, and I didn't. Okay, so I just love this because it's a great way of adding like a little bit of splatter. Now, if you want to keep everything really. Um, Oh, thank you, Elaine. Yes, darkening the edges. That's so smart. Elaine knows me really well. Thank you. I will darken only, but only, so, so yes, I should actually use this to darken the edges as well. Elaine has done a lot of my classes on Patreon and members. So if you want to ever join that, you, you get like all these like extra tips that I try to include that I forget sometimes here. So, um, so I'm only a darkening them right where the design is nowhere else because i want to like make sure that um that it stays within that it stays within that and um 
<laughs> yeah, Elaine is one of my, I don't want to say old, I don't want to say the word oldest followers, but you are. You've been following me since I started, I think in 2013 or like even, I mean, I can't even remember, like honestly, like so long. So I thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, um, sorry, what was I saying? So I said I wasn't going to use paints, but if you want to protect your page, okay, so for example, you don't want uh, to, because this is water reactive, you can use the Distress Microglaze afterwards. You can put it on top and that will help like, you know, like protect everything. Um, I've seen Tiffany, my friend Tiffany added with, um, how do you call it? She's added with like a little sponge dauber. I sometimes use it with my finger for it. But um, but definitely, like, anything goes. So oh, I really, really, really love how this turned out. I love the roots. I love the theme of it. So it's a, basically the theme of, like, meaningfulness and growth and life and art. And what better than to be all of us together? So together, together is better. Better together. I like the theme of this. Um, so, I mean, this is it. I would love to stay with you longer because I'm having such an amazing time, but uh, I am going to be done for today. And I'm just so grateful and thankful. And if you want to see uh, the same techniques, I'm going to be linking right after how to create collage with napkins. I'm linking that if you haven't catch, if you haven't caught that one, it's right here. So yeah, all the collage ones for mixed media will be linked right here. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day, everyone. Bye.